Let's go into the next one. The biggest move, I feel like, of the offseason was the Johnny Goudreau. So yeah. let's head over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And they are currently $958,000 over the cap. Mm-hmm. So uh, they did end up re-signing, which we actually made a video, um, or we had a conversation, I say at this point, because we didn't release it, about Patrick Laine maybe not signing there. But Patrick Laine re-signed right. in Columbus. Yep. Uh, you had Patrick Laine, you got... Uh, Johnny Goudreau, you got Jacob Forsek, you got Nyquist, you got Ross, you, you know, you got some nice pieces there. So that being said, with Johnny Hockey, did you think there was inherently anything wrong with how he handled leaving Calgary? I don't, um, in a personal stand, absolutely not. You know, uh, you look at the numbers, you do your validation as far as like what you're actually getting mm-hmm. your you know and what what you want to do as improving your life or so on and so forth what's best for your family if you look at everything right um let's be honest he won he's it may seem like he's getting less money but due to the taxes and everything imposed in in Canada uh he actually would have gotten less money even though the overall big number looks so nice, right? What was it? Uh, what 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 was the initial uh, quantity that Calgary hey, offered him? I think it was eighty-four million, if off the top of my head, if I remember correctly, for seven seasons. Yep. And or he re- got right, and then he got offered uh, sixty. What, what did he sign for? Sixty something. Uh, mil- Sixty-four. I think 64 it was sixty-four million. Th- right. Let me, let, me, let me double check that while you talk. Yeah. So. At the end of the day, due to the taxes and everything, he was actually going to make less in the long run for an extra year playing in Calgary than if he would have, uh, well, instead of doing what also, he did. So it was eight years, $84 million from Calgary, and then he signed a seven-year for $68.25 million in Columbus. Um, right, and he's getting so, more money. So, like, um, I double-checked some of that math. And I followed up on it. Yeah, he actually, on average per year, will actually make a little bit more in Columbus. So um, from what the statistics of the federal and the state level, um, how much they tax you. And that's actually why a lot of hockey players like playing down in Florida and Tampa Bay is there's no state tax, so you see more of your money. But, um, I mean, like, do you think he could have handled it in a better fashion? Do you think he should have, like, told the fans he wasn't going to resign or do you like do you believe what he said in the players tribune where it really was a last second thing because like to me like that's a big decision i don't know if i just make a split hair decision like ah fuck it just send it i'm going to columbus i i think that columbus may have had that offer on the table for him prior to him making this, his decision by a long shot mm-hmm. um i think he was really um waiting to see if calgary would do something to match that same, you know, that same dollar value. Mm. And I just think that maybe they just fell short. They couldn't do it. And again, it's not even the team's fault or his fault. It's just the taxes are that the that Canada places on you, it just it takes up so much of your money. You almost lose half of your money to play in Canada. And I think that that, that was a determining factor. It was just like, hey, Calgary, listen. I can make a little. I can make a little bit more money down here, you know. Can can you do this? Can you match this? You know. And at the end of the day, I don't think they could. And I think that's when he said, you know what? Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that. You know, uh, the money is gonna play a, a fact. Thank you for everything and whatnot. I have to go. You know. And mm. how do he handle it with the fans? I mean, let's be honest. It doesn't matter what he would have done. The fact that him he was leaving. Is going to make the fans upset. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and to be fair, I think, re- yeah, regardless of what he did, yeah. they were going to be upset. Um, I, I will say this is a whole different conversation. But I think with the restrictions that Canada has in place with travel and COVID restrictions and vaccinations and stuff of that ilk, that made it very difficult for Johnny because he had Johnny had people in his family that weren't comfortable taking the vaccine and couldn't, like, come up and watch the kids and stuff like that. It just made it very difficult. So I, I understand why. Um, Johnny wanted to come live in the States. You know, he's from here. 
you know, wants to come stateside, be a little bit closer, a little bit less restrictions. Um, it's, it's one of the biggest difficulties as a uh, Canada hockey team is that, quite frankly, you have a lot of disadvantages compared to down south of the United States. A lot more restrictions, a lot more taxes. I mean, it's just, it takes a very special player to want to just deal with some of that BS from the Canadian side of the border and still want to stay. I mean, you saw Petri from the Canadians who like who was a very good player, very good defense for him. He wanted he asked for to get traded not because he didn't like the team or the like the the management. He just said the restrictions and all that nature just was very difficult to deal with and he got sent down south to a US and the United States team. I believe it was Nashville. So, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out uh, with the restrictions in Canada, how many more people get alienated and they're like, well, I'm not going to go deal with that bullshit. I'm going to go, you know, I'll go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and let's, uh, you know, getting back to the Johnny Goudreau, let, let's kind of break down his season by season, right? Um, I watched Johnny when he played for Boston College, a uh, phenomenal hockey player in the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, 2013, 2014, one game played, one goal. That's a, Now that is a way to start a career. <laughs> one point, plus one, 100 shooting percentage. My man didn't even need to take a second shot. He's like, I'm good. Um, <laughs> second season, 80 games played, 24. Well, this is more of his first season now, I think about it. But 80 games played his rookie season, 24 goals, 40 assists for 64 points. In your rookie season, that is phenomenal. Yep. Like That is a really good season. The next season, he puts up almost a point per game. 79 games played, 30 goals, 48 assists for 78 points. Season after that, 72 games played, 18 goals, 43 assists, 61 points. Season after that, he was more than a point per game. 80 games played, 24 goals, 60 assists for 84 points. And then 2018-2019 season, this was the season I think was his first breakout. It was 82 games played, played the whole season, 36 goals, 63 assists for 99 points. Like, that is a phenomenal season. Mm -hmm. um, next season, he kind of a little back down to earth. Seven games played, 18 goals, 40 assists, 58 points. Still a very good season considering, but, you know, step back from his usual production. The, the, the COVID shortened season, 56 games, 19 goals, 30 assists, 49 points. Phenomenal season as well. Last year was his best season to date. 40 goals, so in 82 games, 40 goals, 75 assists for 115 points were a plus 64. Yeah, now, sir. one of the biggest knocks about Johnny Hockey coming into the NHL was that due to his size, durability would be a problem. But if you look at these seasons, and I'm not obviously the COVID when he played all of them, so he has virtually played... 70 games or plus in every season, excluding the COVID shortened, se COVID shortened season where he played all of them regardless. Mm -hmm. So he has been extremely durable. He's been extremely reliable. And what's, you know, one of the best attributes to have is availability. He is always available to his team. So um, that's definitely what I like to see because for a player that is reportedly 5'9", 165 pounds, yeah. His durability is impressive. Yeah. yeah so. 100%. Uh, I mean, yeah, you, you watch a guy play, you're always scared for your life because you're like, he's so small. <laughs> he's so small. Someone hits him hard, but he takes those hits and he keeps on going. I mean, you know, um, and again, he's in the prime of his career, right? He's 28 years old. He's pretty much figured out what, what he can do best, uh, how to move, um, obviously how to shoot, how to pass. He's doing some really big things. Well, he did some big things in this last one. And now he ends up on a team that is pretty well set as well. Uh, they're really young up front. Um, yep. You know, their oldest player, I think it's 30. They have two players at 32 in the, as a forward. Those yep. are their oldest players. All the other guys are mid-20s or reaching the late 20s, which he is. Right? But that's it. You know, um, you look at the defensive core, another young batch. Um, no. one player at 30, everybody else is literally 28 and less. Actually, pretty, you can pretty much say 26 and less because it's only the 28 year old and the 30, those are the old guys and they're not even that old. You know what I'm saying? You look at mm. the goaltending tandem. I mean, pretty solid. The, well, it's that's pretty solid what, that, that, for, that, for their that, game. I think that's they their weakest improve. part. Yeah, that is I their weakest. 
I mean, mean that, that like Corpus. It's hard. To, okay. It's hard to judge this. That 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 goalie group had when that tragic passing happened mm. with that fireworks incident. I can't blame them mentally not being right. Mm-hmm. When you see a very close friend of you dying in front of you, yep. mentally that's going to mess you up. Yep. So I, I'm going to put last season out the window. You know, hopefully, you know, obviously prayers to the family, um, the tragic Heart. loss and the friends. It's just it, it's heartbreaking. So I'm hoping they can bounce back. But that is that is my biggest worry with this team is the goaltending. Can they bounce back? I think there is talent there in net to bounce back, but. Uh, will they be able to is going to be the one thing. But, like, the funny part is, right, like a guy like Patrick Laine, right, who just re-signed up, re up for 8.7 mil. I mean, Patrick Laine is only 24 years old. <laughs> like, that's, you know, that's the crazy thing. He's been around for so long, you kind of forget how young he is. Yeah. But Patrick Laine is a very, very young hockey player. Um, I mean... Let's just go right into it. He's one of the more productive players in the league. Mm-hmm. All right, twenty-four years old, six foot five, two hundred sixteen pounds, so a big boy. I mean, you uh, look at him though; he looks like he's thirty something. Let's be honest. Look at his face. Yeah, he my does. Man, my man yeah. looks like he's thirty-seven. Just saying. So, so he he went to Winnipeg, and I think he played. I think he performed well in Winnipeg. I think some of the flack he got from the fans was a little. I mean. I think he was young and he needed to grow up, but I think some of the um, flack he would get, like he had a 40 goal season, his rookie year he had 36 goals. Like, you know, he was relatively productive. Um, in Columbus, his first year, he struggled a bit, but last year he was a point per game player with 26 goals, 30 assists for 56 points. So, 56 points in 56 games, that's pretty solid. Uh, the one thing, the one thing that bothers me with Patrick Line, and I will completely admit this. He has all the talent in the world, and I think he has a world-class shot. He has gone on interviews saying that he wants to be a more well-rounded player, which I respect. But I feel like also he should go into his best asset, and that's his shot. I mean, he is developing as a playmaker, and I think that's overall good for his game. But I would like Patrick Laine to shoot the puck more because he has the shot. He really does have the shot. I think you could be looking at a consistent 30-40 goal scorer in a full season with Patrick Laine. And, um, I mean, that would be my only harsh criticism. But, like, getting back to the, to the youth, like, everyone's relatively young on this team. You have some talent. I mean, I don't think they're good enough right now to be a playoff team, but they could be a fringe team, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, like, free agents, I mean, there's some decent free agents out there that they can sign as far as goalies go. You know, you have, you have let me take a look real quick. You have, like, a... Some experience with a Braden Holpe, um, you know who else is out there? Let me uh, go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go right now into it. Yep. Uh, you just got to make uh, the the adjustment a little bit higher. I think it's on the second. Go up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, right there where you see uh, player filters. Go to positions. Go to goalies. Oh yep. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Yep. And then yeah. apply right there. Mm-hmm. Update results. So. You know, I mean, you, you look at a Braden Holpe, you have a, a, a bunch of no-namers, but, you you know, some guys you've seen here or there. Uh, yeah, like you, got, you got Holpe, like I did games played, like you got Holpe, you got Hammond, you got Barube, you got Sparks, yep. you got Schneider's an AHL goalie at this point in his career. Yep. Um, yeah, but I think Holpe's done, isn't he? Uh, I think he's done, but it, nobody's sure. You know, it's one of those things I think – Given the right situation, you give a you give them a team like this, right, which kind of resembles like the way that they play, kind of resembles like the old caps, mm. um, nitty gritty, uh, good talent, rough guys, big guys, uh, outside of Goudreau, obviously, um, you know, that that can put the puck in the net. The defenders are pretty solid, um, mm. you know. Um, he could be a difference maker, Holtby, you know, if he were to sign on there. Um, but outside of that, I mean, again, it's one of those things that they can still fix. You know, yeah, they're over the cap, but they also have way too many forwards signed up on their main roster currently. I'm um, pretty yeah. sure that will change. They have, I think, they're like three players over uh, on their forward side. 
So, I mean, once they get rid of those, they may have, like, an extra mil, maybe two. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that they, they can easily dump that cap. Like, if I was yeah. them, I would probably try to move off Boris check. That's just my opinion. But that's mm-hmm. a hard, that's a high contract to move. But, like, Sean Corrali at 2.5, that's maybe a little bit rich. You can move him. But, um, I mean, like, Holpe had a bounce back year, which is unfortunate he got, like, that injury. Um, right. So he was actually looking good in Dallas. But, uh, yep. yeah, like, I, I think, for, you know, kind of wrapping this up with the whole Johnny Goudreau thing, um, I don't blame him for leaving. I think uh, no. he's got to do what's best for his family and, uh, you know, what's best for him overall. Yep. So no hate on my end for this, uh, for it all. So uh, we're going to – we're gonna. Ha- kudos. Go ahead. Kudos to Goudreau. I think it was a wise decision. Uh, mm. I think that um, – it shouldn't tarnish his legacy what's whatsoever. I think uh, if anything, it, it puts a fire behind him, and he's probably gonna say, "I have something to prove now," just like he did when he first got to Calgary, and you know, it's gonna give him that spark, that little edge, and he's gonna really go hard. 